Welcome to this BMS landing tutorial. Uh, the main reason I am doing this tutorial is because uh, there's a lot of misinformation and some misconceptions about landing the F-16 as modeled in BMS. And I think most of that confusion comes from the uh, Falcon 4 manual because that tells you things like maintain 160 knots and maintain a fuel flow of whatever pounds per hour. If you have that page printed out somewhere, crumple it up and throw it in a trash can because fuel flow is completely irrelevant here. And uh, as most experienced flight sim enthusiasts and hopefully real world pilots know, your approach speed is going to vary based on gross weight. Uh, the heavier you are, the higher your approach speed, and the lighter you are, the lower your approach speed. Now, I have also seen some people on some forums go so far as to claim that you must calculate your approach speed, which you could do using real-world charts, or I believe there's a rule of thumb, I think it's uh, 136 knots plus 4 knots per 1,000 pounds of fuel and stores. However, if you do that, you will get an approach speed that is 10 to 20 knots faster than what you will actually get in BMS. And that is because there is a known flight model issue that the developers are working on. I'm not sure on the specifics of what exactly is wrong or when it will be fixed, but it is a slight bug in the flight model. Now that said, I am not perfect. You will probably see me bounce, uh, especially with this 14 knot crosswind we have here. But to land the F-16 in BMS, the only two things you need minimum are your eyeballs and the AOA indexer, which is here. That is all you need. And I will demonstrate that with a no HUD landing at the end of this video. However, in most cases you will be using the HUD uh, along with the AOA indexer, and so the tutorial will be using, of course, the HUD and AOA indexer. I'm here at the 2,000 feet AGL, it's above ground level, and I'm just going to do a visual pattern and ignore air traffic control because the uh, BMS ATC has not passed their drug testing in a very long time. If you were um, using the ATC, they would give you speed vectors and altitudes, you just follow that, but for this, I'm just going to ignore that. Now as far as landing is concerned, there really is no one right way to do it. Everyone has their own way that they're comfortable with. There are just a few little guidelines to follow, and one of those guidelines is gear down below 300 knots. If you lower the gear above 300 knots, you will no longer have a functioning landing gear. However, if you're flying at 36,000 feet or thereabouts, um, at Mach 1 and 280 knots indicated, you can technically lower the landing gear and be fine. I've actually done that, and it was quite interesting. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is the AOA indexer, and that is, of course, right here on the left next to the HUD. I have the sim paused, and I press the... Um, malfunction and light indicator button so that all the lights are on and I can explain what each light means. However, um, in actual flight, only one of these lights will ever be illuminated at once. Uh, there will never be more than one on at the same time. Now the AOA indexer does function whether you have your gear down or up. Uh, it is always working. However, when the gear is down, um, you use it to get on approach speed and your approach speed is automatically calculated by the flight control system based on your gross weight and a whole bunch of other stuff that I don't fully understand because I am not an engineer but anyways that said you use the AOA indexer to fly a certain AOA that is 13 degrees and you will be at the proper approach speed by flying that AOA the only reason to mentally calculate your approach speed is to cross-check with the AOA indexer in case there's some kind of avionics fault or bug, which of course doesn't really happen in BMS at this point because uh, faults are not really modeled. But anyways, the red V-looking thing at the top, that indicates that 
you are at greater than 14 degrees of AOA. On final approach, that means that you are too slow and you need to add power. Also, if you were to touch down with that amount of AOA, uh, you would scrape your speed brakes and possibly your tail. The green circle in the middle indicates that you are between 11 degrees and 14 degrees of AOA. And that is the ideal range for hitting that approach speed and also on touchdown. So that green circle is what you're going to be looking for on final approach and during the flare and on touchdown. Now at the bottom you have the um, yellow A looking thing. There's got to be a technical term for that shape. That indicates that your AOA is less than 11 degrees and that would mean that you are too fast on approach and need to reduce power. You could land at that speed but you would probably bounce pretty hard and in a crosswing that usually turns into you doing a cartwheel down the runway. Okay, I'm going to pop the speed brakes out a bit here. Let's just open them full. We are below 300 knots, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the landing gear. One, two, three, green, and landing lights are on. And if you have the DE, DED data in the HUD like I do, you can get rid of that by pressing the uncaged button. Now I'm going to pause this because there is some important HUD symbology here. The first thing you'll notice is this dashed line that indicates 2.5 degrees nose down and in the F-16 you want to have a 2.5 degree glide slope when landing. Um, I believe that most aircraft land with a 3 degree glide slope. I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is, it's just what I've heard. And most ILS approaches in BMS will also be around uh, 3 degrees glide slope, uh, depending on the airbase location. Some of them are a little bit different. But ideally, you want a 2.5 degree glide slope. And to do that, of course, you would just place the FPM uh, level with that dashed line, and you are on a 2.5 degree glide slope. Now below that you'll see this bracket, also called a staple, and then it's called the AOA bracket or AOA staple, whichever one. We'll stick with uh, bracket for this video, but you could call it whatever. The top of that bracket indicates um, 11 degrees AOA, and the bottom of that bracket indicates 15 degrees AOA and right in the middle is the 13 degrees of AOA and you use that in conjunction with the AOA indexer so for example if the FPM were at the top of the AOA bracket the AOA indexer should be indicating that your AOA is around um, 11 degrees or less if the FPM is in the middle of that bracket you should have the green light in the middle indicating that you're between 11 and 14 or ideally somewhere around 13 degrees AOA. If the FPM is at the bottom of that bracket um, the AOA indexer should be indicating that you're greater than 14 degrees AOA. And like I said you ideally want 13 degrees AOA. Now here is where you have an option. When you're flying your approach you can either fly with 13 degrees AOA, that's with the FPM in the middle of the bracket all the way down to the runway, or I preferably like to fly with the FPM at the top of the bracket at 11 degrees AOA, and then when I flare, I transition the FPM down to 13 degrees AOA for touchdown. So you have options there to mess around with, figure out whichever way works best for you. Now I'm going to get lined up with the runway here and show you what the HUD looks like when you're on a proper approach. Okay, now when you're setting yourself up for the approach, it can be a bit strange at first, trying to get into that uh, 
AOA, whether it's 11 degrees or 13 degrees, whichever it is that you choose. And that is because it takes a lot of throttle and stick coordination. It just feels kind of awkward at first. Uh, increasing power causes the FPM to rise, and decreasing power causes the FPM to sink. And to maintain the, that um, AOA, you have to... Basically, you can't move the throttle without moving the stick. You have to use both of them. Reducing power, pulling back on the stick, adding power, pushing forward on the stick, just slightly. It takes a lot of fine corrections. this for a second. Okay, so you can see the runway there. And that uh, 2.5 degree nose down line, you want to put that on the very end of the runway, the end of the runway that's closest to you. And of course you want the FPM also on the end of the runway that's closest to you, lined up with the 2.5 degree nose down line. And that will put you on the 2.5 degree glide slip. As you can see now, um, with the AOA bracket, I am at less than 11 degrees AOA, which means I am a little bit fast right now. And if you look at the AOA indexer, as you can see, it is also indicating less than 11 degrees AOA. So I'm going to keep this here and get the 2.5 degree line to uh, rise up to the threshold of the runway here. That looks good. So now I'm decreasing power to get the FPM to drop. That was fast. A bit of turbulence there. Pulling back on the stick a bit to make sure it stays there. Okay, now you can see I'm between 11 and 14 degrees AOA, both on the AOA bracket and the AOA index with the green light. Add a little bit of power, release pressure on the stick, and pause that. Okay, and that's about what you want your picture to look like. You have the FPM lined up with the 2.5 degree nose down line and the AOA bracket right on the threshold of the runway. That's the picture you want. In my case, that is, uh, with the 11 degree approach. If you were doing a 13 degree approach, um, it would look almost the same just with the FPM in the center of the AOA bracket. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Okay, I can reduce power a little bit. FPM drop, back pressure in the stick. Okay, yeah, 13 degree would look something like that. But it would be a lot prettier without all the turbulence. So my approach speed is somewhere around 155 knots, and that was just automatically calculated by the flight control system. Okay, so we're still going on the approach. One other thing I want to point out, I'm going to pause this. If you notice, I am crabbed into the wind, but I am not using any rudder. No rudder whatsoever. The um, flight control system, once again, automatically corrects for many things, not just your approach speed, but for wind. So no rudder is necessary. Um, I have heard of people using rudder landing in crosswinds of greater than 25 knots, but technically this jet is not rated for such strong crosswinds. You shouldn't really be landing in wind that strong anyway. One other thing I have seen people do is that, in this case, they would kick the rudder left uh, right before touchdown to decrab out of the wind and straighten the nose with the runway. That is also not necessary. Um, the airplane will do it for you. So basically, no rudder. The only time you need rudder is when you are on the ground and you don't want to roll off into the grass. Now, one other thing I want to touch on is the flare, and this is something that I can't really 
explain too well. I'm not so sure that many people can because it is something that you just have to practice and kind of figure out your own groove, basically. In my case, um, you can see that I'm doing an 11 degree AOA approach. And when I flare, I bring the FPM along with the AOA bracket, because they typically follow each other, up to the end of the runway. Usually I try to get it up towards the horizon line to soften out my uh, sync rate. And as I'm doing that, initially in the flare I have to maintain power. I have to maintain power to keep the FPM on that AOA bracket. And then once the FPM reaches the horizon line or the end of the runway, I will reduce power just enough for the FPM to fall and settle in 13 degrees of AOA in the middle of the bracket or the green circle on the AOA indexer for touchdown. Watch it, try to replicate it, it will take some time and remember that you cannot adjust throttle without also adjusting the stick. Reduce throttle, put back pressure on the stick, increase throttle, put forward pressure on the stick. And it's very, very minute changes. throttle just a little bit. Okay, it's a little bumpy. Okay, now I'm going to flare. Maintaining power is a little bit too early too high. Reduce power, pull back on the stick, 13 AOA, touchdown. Maintain 13 degrees AOA for Bravo, air brake. One, one. On power. Next time get clearance before landing. Oh shut up. As I was saying, maintain 13 degrees AOA air brake until 100 knots. Gently ease the nose down. And of course, all throughout use rudder as necessary. And I'm putting full right rudder and right aileron, and I'm still sliding off to the side a bit. NWS on. Okay. That was actually a decent landing. Close the air brakes here. So that's it. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't really explain the flare in concrete terms. That, again, is something that you just have to practice and find your own groove. But hopefully the uh, guidelines and tips I outlined will uh, help you in your landings. Okay, as I said in the uh, beginning of this tutorial, um, the only two things you need to land the F-16 are your eyeballs and the AOA indexer, and I'm going to demonstrate that by performing a no-HUD landing. I'm also going to use the uh, VASI system, the uh, series of four red and yellow lights that are next to the runway just to make sure I'm on glide slope um, and so I'm going to be looking for two red two yellow lights and the VASI system is usually set up for a three degree glide slope so it will be just a little bit steeper than um, a standard landing Okay, this might get a little ugly with the crosswind just because I'm having to guess where I'm going. I'm trying to keep my eyes on the opposite end of the runway there. So what are the Vezi lights saying? I'm on glide slope. So let's reduce power and see if we can get to that 13 degrees of AOA. Still a little fast. There we go. Fast again. There we go. I had to reduce power and put a little back pressure on the stick to get that. Come 
right a little bit. Not lined up well. So the AOA indexer is telling me that I am on speed, and the VESI lights are telling me that I am on glide slope. And this should be good right here. Power, power, drop power a bit. Ooh, I'm kind of really long on that one. Yep. Didn't go so well. Cowboy, 1-1, one, one, Kroonshawn Tower. Next time, wait your turn. As you can see, right before touchdown in the flare, I went above 15 degrees AOA and you heard the stall horn go off. And that is not a good condition to be in. It's a miracle I didn't uh, tail strike. Obviously I need to practice my no HUD landings. And I encourage you to do the same. Um, I would recommend not doing it in a crosswind because no HUD landings will help your standard landing landings um, immensely, especially when judging when to flare and what exactly to do in the flare. Um, as you can see with what I just did, I flared a bit too much and uh, glided across half the runway. I wonder if I blew a tire. I think they look good. <laughs> 